I love roses. My father grew them. I love the perfume in a rose. I find that very relaxing and good for my, you know, my spirit. So this is all new. It's also an opportunity to spend time in nature, which I find rather relaxing. Roses are one of the most popular plants in the world. We grow roses here and we sell them to the public. We post them around Australia. We went off to the World Rose Conference, which was held in Sydney, and Graham won the Australian Miniature Rose Championship with the set of roses that he put up. And one of those roses was a miniature rose called Tracy Wickham. And uh, the breeder of that rose who lived up in New South Wales, he called us and said, would we be able to release that rose and grow it for Victoria? And I jumped at the opportunity because I was a mum at home with two kids and it was like, great. And I started growing cutting grown miniature roses. Yeah, that was the start of what we did. And people would come and they would want different roses and I thought I don't have those roses I've only got miniature roses it didn't take me long to work out why don't you get more roses so we bought in roses every type we ended up applying to the council for a permit so that we could function and operate a nursery a lady came into the nursery at Kilmore and she said, Diana, this property out at Clonbernay, you must come and buy this property because if you don't buy it, there's going to be a horse paddock. Curiosity got the better of me and I drove out here one evening and I just, I broke every rule of property purchase. I fell in love. I went back to Kilmore, I said to Gray, I found the perfect property. Come with me and we'll see this property. We drove out here together. I drove in the driveway and we got a little way up the road and he goes, all I can see is work, work, work. <laughs> that was okay, really. And we're... Of course it was, because I did all the work. Yeah, you did all the work, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no. <laughs> With the Black Saturday, you could see the big cloud and the height in the sky, and we were on the back veranda, and the fire at that time was in the south. So we sort of waited for it to come, and you can hear it. All you can do is hear the roar, just like the surf at Torquay. So we set about putting out spot fires as they came. We had no power, we had no phones for six or eight weeks, yet we wanted to stay in our home and that's exactly what we did. And from the day of the bushfires, exactly one month later, we replanted the front garden with oak trees. And that was, for, for us and for our community here, that was a point where we knew that we could recover, we could regenerate and we'd have green again. When I look back now, from when we first started, which was what, 35 years? Yeah, and, yeah and, it's a bit more. And I look at the newer varieties coming through now, they're so much more healthier. Roses do need to be fed, but if we can use organics, it is much better for the soil and much better for the microbes in the soil that we are now becoming a lot more aware of through science and research. They should never be overwatered. They will flourish if they're given adequate water, a good organic fertiliser for the soil, and also liquid food for roses, where the food is absorbed through the leaves, is very economical and also very beneficial. And then, through the year, once the flower has finished, you can prune back, in the old language, up to six to nine inches and that will enable the gardener to have a rose back on that stem within 60 days. 
The value of the rose is found in its ability to grow in all climatic conditions, especially through the hot weather. And I've been lucky enough to breed a blue rose. The reason why a blue rose is considered to be the holy grail of breeders, it's considered that it's genetically not possible to breed. I was always encouraged, even from when I was a child, if you're going to breed something, the main thing is get in and have a go. When I wake up in the morning, I just love coming out here with my cuppa, sitting here and enjoying the vista. And it really inspires me to help other gardeners get on and create lovely gardens for themselves. People will email me and tell me that they're creating a new garden. They can come here to the nursery. And as long as they bring their ideas with them, even some photographs, I love it when we get photographs of what they love and how they see the end result. It's really wonderful that it becomes their garden. I love that part of what I do. We get up here and we water and it generally takes us about an hour and a half each. And it's lovely because we start at opposite ends of the nursery. And as the watering goes on, we eventually end up at a point where we're across the walk from each other, but we're close. And after that hour and a half of meditative thinking in your own space and being in your own place, to be together again and talk about that particular rose that I saw or that one that he saw or, you know, whatever, those nice things. But it's lovely at the end of it. My legacy is that I was privileged to take this garden, be the custodian of it, nurture it, love it, and make it better than when we first came here.